Hello everyone, welcome to Softree's webinar today on common problems with total station service surfaces and how to fix them. My name is Andy, your host for today, and we have our senior engineer Dave Mills with us to present the webinar. Okay, so just some um, quick webinar housekeeping items. You are muted. Um, for the purpose of webinar, but please ask questions and engage with us through the Q&A section of the GoToWebinar panel. And this webinar, as always, is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube page as well. If you've registered for the webinar, you will receive an automated notification including the video recording of this webinar for you to watch and review at a later time. Okay, so before I um, pass on to Dave, just want to show you um, what we have on the agenda today. So today's webinar will be broken into four main um, parts. First, we'll use Rodents to demonstrate how to group and join point codes to make break lines. Um, Dave's going to continue uh, showing how to find and fix inappropriate long break line segments. Finding and fixing crossing break lines comes next. And last little bit, we'll end the webinar by showing you how to create break lines to fix incorrect surface features seen in the 3D window. And without further ado, I will now pass over the screen to Dave Mills. Okay, good afternoon or morning, depending on where you are. And I'm working here on a, uh, a terrain model. Just want to make sure that everybody can see my screen. Is that true? Uh, Andy, is my screen visible? Yes, it's very visible. Great. Okay. So um, this is a terrain that has been created by opening a total station survey file and there's exactly one connected feature the center line um, and there are a lot of points that were recorded here along an existing road um, but there are no brake lines and because of that the surface doesn't look right this is the kind of feature you get when you create a surface on an existing road and there are no brake lines so these these kind of diamond shaped uh, features in the surface just don't look right. Um, there's other things similar to that along the road on the other side and uh, so brake lines are important. Now it is possible to create connected features like this center line feature at import time. Um, so if I were to let's just look at it. I'm going to open an existing ASCII file, there's one, and we get these options here. Now um, it's possible to connect up point codes, and if you don't have point codes in your uh, import options, you can load them from the file here, uh, and you can do things like connect point codes to make a polyline. Um, I'm just doing the center line. I could do the edge of pavement. The problem with this import format is that it will only work if the file has been surveyed in the correct order or if it has been sorted. So we're not going to go into this uh, into the details of, of how to set up the import options. That's kind of another topic. What we're going to do instead is look at what you can do after you've read the points in. So if I read these points in now, I get this data here. And all I did was connect one feature, the center line. It worked great. There's no glitches in that. Um, but now I want to create point, uh, I want to connect up some points that have um, point code tags, like this point here, for example. So when I did the import, I was careful to name the feature after its point code. So this point code is called EP. Uh, I'm just going to switch back to the file I had before because it's got nicer point code names. Uh, 
Okay, and there it is. I renamed it as just EP instead of EP dot EP. That file came from another, another. Um, it was designed to be read into another road design package. Anyway, here we are, the, the same data points, but they've been set up to have point codes that kind of make sense for our software. Shoulder, EP, these ones were called CL. And I want to connect up all the shoulder points or the edge of pavement points, EP, so that I have brake lines along the edge of the existing road. I'm going to use select feature by name. I could just type character E and shift and, and find all the EPs and select them. But it's probably easier to use the advanced tool here and I can just type in EP. Um, if they all started with EP and they had some other characters in, I could put maybe a star in there for wildcard. EP works great. So first unselect all, then select, and there's 135 of them. And now I'm going to join them together. And that's what we get. So this is the first and one of the most common problems with surveyed surface data. The surveyor didn't distinguish between left points and right points. I would rather connect up all the left ones and all the right ones without connecting them to each other. OK, here's the fix. First of all, let's undo that. Oh, and if you didn't have, if it was already like that and you didn't have a, an option to undo, you can also use this explode function. Okay, so there's all the points back the way they were. Now, I'd like to select just those points um, and display nothing else. How do I do that? Also, I want the center line. So I'm going to shift, click on the center line. Now I have the um, edge of pavement and center line selected. I'm going to use this little tool here to invert selection and hide everything else. Turn off the displayed checkbox. Uh, they're still displayed because they're still selected, but as soon as I select something other than those features, they disappear. Okay, we can probably forget about the 3D view for now. Um, well, this makes it easy to, to build a brake line by hand. I could just create a new feature, call it uh, E. PL for left, make sure it's brake line, and draw it with the mouse. I have to decide which side is left. Okay, this side is left. So, like so. And that creates a brake line. You can imagine that would take me a while to connect up all those dots. Here's a trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the center line to create a polygon only encloses one side or the other of the road. So let's copy that, paste it again. I now have a copy of the center line. Let's just call it um, boundary. And just so I don't get it mixed up, I'm going to change the color to be cyan. Uh, and I'll change the line type too. Now it's a it's a line, it's not a boundary, but I can add to it. The feature is selected, edit mode, click to create a new point, click to anchor it down, click to create a new point, click to anchor it down, do the same at the other end. Click to create a new point. There we go. And I can I could make a line to join the two, but there's a nice feature here called close in our features menu. There we go. Now I have a polygon that is enclosing the points on the right hand side. Let's use that boundary polygon to select the features on the right hand side. So we'll do inside. Don't include hidden. That would get all those other features that we carefully hid from display. And it's selected half of the EPs, all the ones on the right. Uh, that makes 68 of them. And now that they're selected, it's easy to make them into a break line. Click on the Join button, or Control-J does the same thing. Change it to a break line. Here's a good time to change the name to. This is EPR for right. 
um, and maybe I want to do a line type and symbol change as well. The left hand side is the same process, just reselect the boundary. When you do select by boundary, it's always using the currently selected feature. And then this time I want the outside um, and that gives me the rest of them. Control J join and change their name to EPL. Right, so I don't need my boundary feature anymore. Select it, well I probably do need it for other things, let's just hide it. Well, let's not hide it yet because I want to get all my points back. How do I do that? Select all or control A and then just turn on the display checkbox. There we go. Yeah, so there's other features along here called um, shoulder and toe and other things like that. And I might want to use that same strategy and the same boundary feature to select them and join them and make break lines. So the the nice thing about this option or this technique is that it doesn't matter what order the points were surveyed in, um, it'll find the ones on left and right. There are situations where it doesn't work very well, like you have um, a branching road, uh, and then you have to be a little more careful. Okay, so that's a pretty common problem. Let's open another model which has crossing brake lines in it. So this terrain is the same data set. Um, actually, I added another bad point in there. You can see it in the 3D window. But it's basically the same data set as we were just looking at. Um, and you can see that there are a whole bunch, oops, warning inconsistent triangle set encountered. That has uh, popped up because the there are crossing break lines in this model. Uh, but you can see that th there are a lot of break lines created that look pretty good. There's EP on the left side. There's EP on the right side. Um, there's some top of bank features. Uh, there's a shoulder feature in here somewhere too. This one maybe? Yeah. Okay. So it, it generally looks okay, although this doesn't look right. I can see that at a glance. What the heck is that feature there? It says it's a shoulder, but it's looking pretty weird. Um, also, the surface kind of looks okay. You'd have to look carefully to find all the issues. But if I build this model, calculate triangles, I get crossing break line error. So break lines are designed to force the model to represent things like ditch, edge of road, top of escarpment, um, creek, gully, bottom, top of bank, things like that. And if you have crossing break lines, the software doesn't know which elevation to use and it produces a model that is, first of all, not, not what you'd expect given the shape of the real land that you surveyed. Um, but second of all, it can also have um, inconsistent triangles in it. Okay, so there are crossing break lines. And again, it says here may cause inconsistent triangles, uh, which is why we are getting that warning message. And now I'm going to find them. So the way that you find crossing break lines is you open the easiest way. Uh, sometimes you can just see them, like right here I can see one. Uh, the easiest way to find them all is to open a points window. So that's this button down on the lower left here. And it's full of all the points for all the selected features, which is interesting. Um, but really all I care about right now are the features that have a special property. So I'm going to select by property and turn on the crossing break line property. Put it in the window by clicking down here. And oh, there's one. There's another one. How am I going to find them? There's there's quite a few of them in here. Sort. 
So I click on the top of the file in the XBreak um, heading. It sorts the, uh, the file and there's all the crossing break lines at the top. Typically a uh, crossing break line, uh, well let's just look at them one by one. So these are the coordinates. Um, I don't want to have to write down these coordinates and figure out where things are. So what I'll do is I'll just click here and it sets the current point, scrolls the plan window and I can zoom in and see that this point here belongs to a segment that's a crossing break line. In fact, because it's a, it can't really show you the whole segment, the segment is two points, it's the first point in the segment. And if I jump to the next point, that's over here. So somewhere between those two points, I'm going to turn off the, uh, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to remove the triangles and then I won't get this warning anymore. So delete. Um, also, I'm going to remove the contours. Contours just get in the way half the time and they're easy to recreate. So let's delete the, the model and now that warning goes away. Good. Um, the, the 3D window is still showing you something here for convenience, but it, there really is no surface. If I hover, there's no elevation. Okay, so somewhere between this point and that point, there's a crossing break line. I think it's fairly obvious it happens right here. This is a typical crossing break line problem. We have a roadway joining another roadway. They both have road edge features and they cross. So what's my solution? Well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to select this feature, insert a point, move the pencil until I'm over the feature, click to create a new point. You can see it's moving now with the mouse and hover, move it over the edge, the, uh, the end of the other brake line and click to anchor it down. So I added a point here that is coincident with that point. So I haven't really changed the surface. And those brake lines still cross, but that's okay because they share a common point. So crossing brake lines only occur when they, um, when they don't share a common point. For example, um, that is a crossing brake line. At this point here, it doesn't know which elevation to use. Should I use the elevation in this feature or that feature? They're not the same. What do I do? Crossing brake line. So that's okay because they share the same point. They have the same elevation. There's no, no um, issues. Okay, found um, crossing brake line number one. Let's click over here. There's another crossing brake line. What happened here? You can see that um, there's a bunch of them associated with the same problem. You can see that this feature, which is supposed to be an edge of pavement feature, um, it has a well-defined point over here and another well-defined point over there, but nothing in between. But I can see these points. So this is a classic surveyor mislabeled the point problem. Um, these points, which are labeled spot, should have actually been EP. How do I fix that? Same way I, I did the other one. I will select the, the EP feature, go into edit mode, move the cursor over the feature so I get the plus sign on the pencil, click to create a new point, move it over the um, point that it should have been connected to and click to anchor it down. So that's working well because my plan window is set up to snap. Do it again. Click to create a point, move it over there, snap. Click to create a point, move it over that point, snap. And I've now fixed that, that crossing break line issue. The, um, and I've smoothed out the curve. Uh, there are more. There's another one here. And this one is kind of hard to see right away. But if I say jump to the next point, because I know the, break, the crossing brake line is somewhere between this point and the next point, it jumps way down here. Oh yeah, it's that thing. So it's kind of hard to see what's going on. I'm going to use the same trick I used a second ago. Let's invert selection and hide everything except the, 
the feature of interest. Oh, I got the I got another road edge in there too. I'm going to hide that one as well. Well, I th I think you can see what happened. The points were connected in order, um, and then it got to the end, and oops, found a few more down here. So what I want to do is remove this long segment. Select one of the endpoints. It doesn't really matter which endpoint I select. I could have selected this one up here. And then um, break at current point. And that's a speed key control Q. Okay, done it. Um, now this segment is still in there. I want to get rid of it. So I select it pick up this point here, that was duplicated, so I'm not actually removing any data from the model, um, and then hit the delete key to remove it. So if you want to remove one point in a feature, you have to capture it first. If I hit the delete key now, this whole feature disappears. Oops, let's undo that. But if I capture a point and hit the delete key, it only removes the one point. Okay, undo. Now this doesn't look right. This this really doesn't look right. What's going on here? This is probably a driveway with two edges because this is a shoulder feature. Um, so I'm going to explode this into separate points. Um, let's make them a little easier to see. There we go, now I can see them better. And then I'm going to connect them together in the order they should be connected. So uh, let's just select this point. This point, I'm holding the shift key, shift click. Whoops, missed, shift click. There we go, I got three points selected. Um, Control J, join them together. There's a nice brake line shoulder on one side of the road. Do it again over here. Control J. Now that's the edge of um, the driveway. It probably should be connected up over here where it, where it branches off the main road. And there are points there, so I can just snap to those points. I can't see them too easily because there's, there's no symbols turned on. Oopsie, I forgot to click. Um, apply. There we go. Okay, so there's a point there, there's a point there. Um, they're now easier to see. So if I select this feature, go to edit mode and extend it, I can snap onto that point. Do the same for this one. And now that looks that looks like a driveway. Control A select all, display them. And whoops, if I create a point by mistake, escape gets rid of it. And there is my um, fixed surface. Let's see what it looks like now. I'm going to regenerate everything. Notice the calculate triangles is turned on. And it looks way better um, in the areas where, first of all, there's no crossing brake line. There's no longer a um, Warning, inconsistent triangles encountered, um, and this, the surface generally looks better. Except for that bad point there in the middle that's creating this giant hole. So obviously there's a bad point in there. I want to just select it and modify it. Holy smoke, all these contours are causing problems. So again, when you're trying to fix up your surface, sometimes the contours just get in the way. So delete them. They're easy to recreate. Now, I can look on my surface and say, yeah, here's the hole right here. By the way, notice that the, the cursor is moving in both windows. That's because my 3D options are set up to have track mouse turned on. Anyway, 
Um, so it's not too hard to find where the point is. If I zoom in on the on the 3D window, I can say, oh yeah, yeah, it's this it's this point right here, that one. And if I select it, it shows the elevation as being oh 377. That's okay. I selected the wrong point. Um, it's in the middle here. There, ah, oh, missed it. Okay, that point. Elevation zero. So I don't want that to be part of my model. I could delete the point or just turn off um, model that it's no longer part of the surface. Right, so we, we think everything's good now. It looks great. Um, I happen to know there's a couple more problems in here. You may have noticed that there's a kind of glitchy section here where it's connecting up this point with that point there and creating a piece of pretty artificial surface. It's not realistic. Uh, you can see it in the contours here. That's because when I created my surface, I had the uh, maximum side length set to 200. Now mostly when people survey roads, they, they kind of go along the road and survey cross sections at, at relatively equal intervals. And this one was surveyed every 15 to 20 meters. So I really shouldn't need um, to interpolate between points that are 200 meters apart. Let's change this to 50. There we go. Now I got rid of those glitchy contours over here. But look, there's a hole in the model right there. I may not notice that. It may be off the screen. But I can find holes that are caused, in this case, by a long break line two different ways. So here's the first method. In the terrain modeling ribbon, there's a thing called tin operations. This is new. It used to be in the generate tin. Um, and you can create a boundary. So I'm going to create a boundary around my surface, like so. And there it is. But notice that I just created three features. It says here on the bottom of the screen. Um, and similarly, you could see them in select features by name. If I skip down to the T's, there they are. There's three boundary features. Um, the tab key moves you around the selected features. So there's the, the main boundary tab. There's another boundary right there. That's the hole I showed you the first time. Oh, and there's another one down here, a very skinny hole that may be hard to see. It's, it's over here somewhere. Um, and so I've got, I've got issues that are causing holes in the model. What exactly are those issues? I'm going to delete those boundaries. We don't really need them. Um, here, like I say, it's hard to see. Um, up, at, up at the other end, over here, where that hole is. There we go. Let's select that um, break line feature. What we've got is a break line segment that starts here and ends over there. It's quite long. I could use the measure tool. And it says that it's 57 meters. OK, well, that explains why there are no um, triangles there. I explicitly told the software to make short features, or short triangles, 50 meters and no longer. So a break line longer than 50 meters leaves a hole in the model, which um, leads to the other method of finding um, incorrect break lines. If the break line feature is too long, it probably isn't realistic. And you can find the long ones by looking for features with long segments. You can display segment lengths in here, in the this part of the properties panel. It's part of uh, forward leg, horizontal distance next. And there's a horizontal distance 20 meters. If I go back, this one is now showing 57 meters. Okay, so that's a long one. 
You can also do that in the points window. So here my my um, here's my crossing break lines um, column. Let's add just like I did for the features window. Let's add forward leg horizontal distance to my list. There we go. And there's the there's the big one, 57. Right. Well, this is only showing one feature. Let's look at all the brake line features. So select by property. This time I don't want just the crossing brake lines. I want any brake line at all. And add it to the list. Now it's hard to see the long ones unless you sort. So I'm going to sort by length and scroll up to the top and there's two big ones. So that's the first one here and that's the second one down here. And you can see what the problem here is. This is the same problem we had before. Um, this feature doesn't have any points in there but it should have. It should have snapped onto that one and that one and that one. Oops, and there's another one down here. Now that was pretty hard to see in the model. I want to show you an example of a long break line that um, is a little easier to detect. So I'm just going to switch over to this model here. So this looks okay. It doesn't seem to have any problems um, at first glance. If I zoom in closely here, you can see a strange black line there. And, uh, you know, what what is that? What's going on there? Uh, it, it doesn't really look like a surface. It's kind of hard to see. But you would sure see it if you created a road. And I, I did. So I'm just going to flip over to the um, location module and open that road. Hmm. Looks like location is not starting. Okay. Oh, there it is. What did I just do? I thought I opened an alignment. Open. Oh, I see what I did. I got two of these things open at once. There it is. Um, and look at this cross section. Look at this spike in here. So that there is the top of a brake line that was too long. Uh, let's just get rid of the uh, the actual cross section. So we're just looking at the ground. So because the road was straight, even though my brake line was missing a whole bunch of points in it, it didn't, sorry, I meant to do this. That's better. Um, that little glitch there is a symptom of a brake line that doesn't have, that's missing some points. Well, let's go back to the terrain again. And zoom in on this area here. And you can see the problem. This brake line feature called EPR is skipping these surveyed cross section points. So we've got a long segment, a long brake line segment which is creating a perfectly straight line in the model. And then we've got all these other points nearby. So you end up with a, um, an artifact that looks like a, um, a sharp uh, knife edge in the surface. Easily fixed, just like before. And if you couldn't find it, if this model was really big and you were having trouble finding it, 
you could use the, um, the tools that I just showed you. And I don't have them turned on in here. Do I want to go through the trouble of, of setting this up again and, and adding um, and so on? No need. That sort of thing can be saved in screen layouts. So here's the screen layout from the other model. Um, well, let me just let me just go over there and save it. So this is all set up the way I want it. Uh, view, save screen layout. Now I can use that in future terrains or existing terrains. So I can switch over here and say open. And you can see it's put the um, horizontal distance in here and it's also put it in here and I can sort uh, whoops, sort the other way and there's the big one 157 we're starting starting right there so now that I've found it easily fixed I just again click on the feature to add a new point snap it to the place where it was supposed to be connected and we've created a more reasonable uh, break line. There were quite a few points missing. I just clicked near the line but not close enough so I've created a, a point that is branching from the end of the feature instead of inserted here. Just hit the escape key to get out of there. Okay so I wait for the little cross then click. Yeah. So yeah so if I click out here it creates one connecting to the end if I click here, it inserts a point. And if I rebuild this surface, it should look good. I think I missed my snap. No, that's a good snap. Okay. And my 3D view. There we go. Looks pretty good. Lots of contours. Um, let's go back to this model here and do the same thing. W what should I do here? It's actually not clear. Uh, there's no obviously missing point here. Uh, maybe the solution is just to make it a little longer. Um, and down here, I, I, I do need to connect up all those points. And I, I think I did that already. Can't remember. Um, but let's look at the surface and see if there are any other issues. Ah, there's one right there. So that just doesn't look right to my eye. We're connecting a point on the road edge to a point in the bank here. And it looks like there should be a ditch or something there. And there isn't. So let's select that point. Look at it over here say, well, you know, the, it's not tagged as anything special. It's just a spot point. But I, I really don't think, oh, I've, have I got um, track mouse turned on? Yeah, I do. Oh, I think my model's out of date. Let's just rebuild it. Yeah, it's out of date here. Sometimes that checkbox isn't turned on. And you click OK here, and all it does is recalculate the contours. That can happen if you add a new break line. You'll see that in a sec. Okay, so this this section here, that little bridge doesn't look right. I want to I want to force that triangle. Let's look at the triangles. I want to force that triangle there to go this way. I want to flip it. I want the triangle to go along here. I do that by adding a break line. So home, new feature. Let's call it BL for break line. Make sure the break line checkbox is turned on. Draw it with the mouse. The elevation is going to be very important, but I don't have to type in the correct elevation because I can snap onto that point and snap onto that point. So I've created a, a two-point break line and all I have to do is rebuild the surface. Here's where I have to remember to turn on the calculate triangles because uh, adding a break line doesn't actually force anything out of date. 
but I do want to include it next calculation. Okay, recalculate, and there we go. You can see that that now looks more like a ditch, um, and the triangle is going along the brake line instead of crossing it. Well, that covers all the um, topics I wanted to discuss. There are some questions. Yes, Dave, we have um, three questions received so far. Um, is this a good time for questions? It is. Let me answer the first one. Um, keyboard shortcuts, they seem to make me go faster. That's true. Is there a list available? Well, not exactly, but every menu item, at least all the good ones, have tooltips. So at current break at current point shows me this tool, hover tooltip, control Q. Similarly, um, the other one I use a lot is join. And again, join is control J. So yeah, look in the look in the ribbon, hover on the feature, and if there's a if there's a speed key, it'll show it to you. What happens if we ignore crossing brake lines? Well, two things. First of all, your surface may not look quite right. And if there's no, um, I'm just gonna turn off these triangles. If we ignore crossing brake lines, uh, you may get a situation where, like here for example, it has to choose one brake line over the other and you will get, um, basically, the, one of the brake lines gets turned off. So it will, it will not honor both brake lines. It will only honor one of them. So you get a surface that's not quite right. Um, in the worst case, you get, as we saw earlier, um, inconsistent triangles. And what does that exactly mean? It means that when you try to pick up an elevation, I can show you that here. This is before I fixed it. And if I hover near here, it's trying to pick up an elevation. Yeah. And it's it's not capable of doing that. It, it's actually failing and giving me this warning. So that's the other thing that can happen if you ignore crossing brake lines. This isn't so bad in the terrain module, but if you were to create a road design and you were draping a cross section in that zone, the cross section would probably just stop. There would be no ground um, in the cross section. So you, you'd look at your cross section uh, and instead of looking like this, it would maybe just stop right here and there'd be nothing on the right hand side. Final question. Yes, um, we use the same point codes. Uh, can you set up the point codes? And I, I mentioned earlier, when you're importing a, um, like this, open ASCII file, let's pick this one. That format and point codes, now there aren't any point codes in there right now, but if I load them from the file, and set them up to do various things like join the the uh, um, center line features and set the yeah this is important the point code here is in the fifth column so i've set up the structure to take the fifth column and make it into a text comment as well as name the feature after it so i'm naming the the feature after the point code all these settings that i may spend a little time um, organizing. I, I like, I might remove some of these or change them to um, use wildcards, for example. All those settings that I do here can be saved and you save them. Um, if I actually make some changes and try and close this document, it's gonna prompt me, your import options have been saved. Do you wanna modify them? And if you say yes, they get saved to 
this is the place to put them. That's your default um, import export options or import options. Um, and that, that would be where you'd want to save. And there's another way to do that too. You can also do it here in the setup import dialog box, save as default. There's the one that I just modified and the whole list gets saved when you do a save as default or you can even save it as the different file name if you want. You don't have to use normal, you can give it some other name. Uh, and those little files can be emailed around. You can send them to other users um, and they, they are generally stored in that, in that same place. Um, this place here, Program Data Software Road Inch with the version number. Okay, sorry I took so long. That was the uh, the sum total of what I wanted to say about fixing surveyed terrains. Uh, we'll send you a link to the video and anybody who is registered will get that even if they didn't watch. And of course you can send that link off to anybody you want. Uh, they can They can look at it later. Thanks very much for your time and attention. Oh, and um, just to add a little bit at the end, um, all remaining questions will be answered over email. So if you have any questions, please feel free to send it to support at softree.com. And thanks again for sticking um, until the end, folks. Bye, bye now. Bye-bye.